Hello, eco-friendly viewers, and welcome to Planet Earth, our loving home. On this edition of our program, we speak with renowned Australian climate scientist, David Caroli. David Caroli is professor of meteorology in the School of Earth Sciences at the University of Melbourne, Australia, and an Australian Research Council Federation fellow specializing in the fields of greenhouse climate change, ozone depletion, and climate variations associated with the El Nino Southern Oscillation. An internationally recognized expert on global warming, he is a member of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a coordinating lead author for the panel's 2001 Third Assessment Report, and a lead author for the panel's 2007 Fourth Assessment Report, as well as a review editor. Today, Professor Caroli discusses the devastating effects of climate change on Australia and the rest of the planet. The summers of 2007, 2008 and 2009 had less sea ice in the Arctic than any other year. We've also seen increases in melting of the ice sheet in Greenland. So what we've seen is increases in melting and the retreat of the glaciers so that the ice is moving faster down to the water. Mm. And what that means potentially is a destabilization of the Greenland ice sheet and more rapid melting of ice, which will contribute to faster sea level rise. Mm. We're also seeing at high latitudes in the Northern Hemisphere on land, melting of permafrost, areas that, close to the surface of the ground that are permanently frozen, that don't actually melt in summertime. And what we're finding is those areas of frozen ground are actually melting for the first time in recorded history. Mm. That's destabilizing buildings but it's also having another amplifying feedback because trapped in this frozen ground are large amounts of essentially vegetation material mm. and methane that's trapped under the ground. When it melts, it releases the methane and that also can amplify the rate of warming because methane is a very effective greenhouse gas, mm. much more effective per kilogram of methane than carbon dioxide. Mm. So releasing methane from melting permafrost is another factor that increases the rate of climate change. Global warming's dangerous impact on Australia is becoming increasingly apparent with each passing year. Here in Australia, we've experienced massive reductions in rainfall, in the southeast and the southwest, which is having impact on agriculture. At the same time, the country is undergoing increasingly intense and frequent heat waves. We had in winter, in August, a heat wave, not in this same area, but in a different part of Australia, in uh, Queensland and New South Wales. And then we again experienced record temperatures. Records not just for 30 years or 50 years, but records for the whole of the observational data for more than 100 years. And the remarkable thing, this is really what surprised me and many other climate scientists, mm -hmm. was that normally the hottest time of the year in most parts of the world is in summer. And summer in Australia is January and February. The interesting thing is that there were a number of cities, towns, that had their hottest day of the year in this heat wave in August, hotter than any time in January or February, the normal hottest time of the year. And so to have the hottest day of the year in the middle of winter is really unusual. It's just unheard of in many of these areas. Besides recurring heat waves, droughts are also disturbing many parts of Australia, leading to extremely destructive wildfires. The combination of the increases in temperature, the heat waves, and the reduction in rainfall has caused big problems with increased frequency and intensity of bushfires. So Victoria had its worst bushfires ever 
in February this year. And there is a clear signal of climate change making these bushfires even worse. Nearly 170 people died in those bushfires. Due to global warming, Australia's national treasure, the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest reef and home to over 1,500 species of fish and 400 species of coral, is facing unprecedented threats. The Great Barrier Reef is a massive coral reef system down the eastern coast of Australia, in the northeastern part of Australia, more than a thousand kilometers long. That's been experiencing major damage called coral bleaching, where the colors in the coral associated with the symbiotic relationship between the coral polyps and small zooxanthellae. Um, they are being affected by increasing temperatures as well as being affected by changes in the acidity of the water because of increases in dissolved carbon dioxide. So the increasing temperatures and the increasing amounts of dissolved carbon dioxide are putting extra stress on the coral reef. They're causing the corals to bleach at an increasing frequency and some of the corals are dying. When we return, Professor Caroli will discuss the environmental effects of climate change if the average global temperature rises 4 degrees Celsius. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Planet Earth, our loving home, featuring internationally renowned climate change expert David Caroli, professor of meteorology at the University of Melbourne, Australia, and an Australian Research Council Federation Fellow. Professor Caroli recently participated in the international conference Beyond Four Degrees held at the University of Oxford, UK, which examined the potential impact for the planet and humanity if the average global temperature rises four degrees Celsius. The conclusions of the conference were that even with substantial emission reductions, four degrees of warming will probably be a reasonable mid-range estimate. So we really have to work very hard on reducing greenhouse gas emissions if we want to reduce the damage associated with warming and changes in rainfall patterns and keep the warming in global average temperatures to only two degrees, which is the target that's been set by the European Union Currently, Earth's atmosphere contains about 380 parts per million of carbon dioxide, which is considered an insufficient amount to cause a two degree rise in global temperature. However, the picture changes when other greenhouse gases are factored in. We have already exceeded the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, or carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, that would give a 50-50 chance of exceeding two degrees of warming. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is we're already got enough greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to give more than two degrees of warming. We have to rapidly reduce emissions if we want to minimize this risk of going above two degrees. What are some of the disastrous consequences to our planet if we experience a four degree jump in global temperature? So a world with four degrees of warming is a world with much reduced cold extremes, but dramatic increases in the frequency of heat waves, dramatic increases in the frequency of wildfires or bushfires, not just in Australia, but also in Athens or in areas around the Mediterranean, increases in 
wildfires in California, increases in fires in many of the what are called Mediterranean climates. And those are already happening. We would also see major changes in rainfall patterns with decreases in rainfall in many of the already dry areas. But unfortunately, there are increases in rainfall in many of the already wet areas, and that can lead to increases in flooding. We also see major reductions in the sea ice, melting of permafrost at high latitudes, and the reductions in glaciers, we would expect for four degrees of warming that sea level will rise by at least 10 to 20 meters. The last time the global climate system was four degrees warmer, we had more than 25 meters of sea level rise. Scientists have calculated that a staggering 51% or more of human-induced global greenhouse gas emissions come from the production and consumption of animal products such as meat, eggs, and milk. In addition, the world's primary source of the dangerous greenhouse gas methane is this same cycle. The methane from animal agriculture is particularly important because methane is more effective kilogram by kilogram in warming the climate system compared with carbon dioxide. If we're only talking about a 20 year time scale, methane is in fact 70 times more powerful as a warming agent mm. than the same amount of carbon dioxide. So if we want to slow down global warming, the most effective thing to do on a 20 year time scale is to reduce emissions of methane into the atmosphere and the major contributor is animal agriculture in terms of methane emissions. Mm. Professor Caroli supports organic farming as a highly effective and practical approach to curbing climate change. Well, organic farming can be very effective because what it's doing is not using energy and chemicals to produce fertilizers. It's using the natural fertilizers. And what that means is that, first of all, it uses less energy. Secondly, it is able to store more carbon in the soils. And so it acts as a way of utilizing changes in the agricultural practice to remove carbon dioxide, from the atmosphere and store it into soils. We know that the, for billions of years on the Earth, photosynthesis has taken carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put it into plants and into the ground. We know that that is a very, very effective mechanism for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and putting it into plants and into the ground. And so what we should be trying to do is to use that well-proven mechanism not new technologies, but a technology that has existed for more than a billion years to capture carbon dioxide and store it into the ground. Mm. To conclude, Professor Caroli has the following message for our global viewers. We have to start afforestation. We have to change our agricultural practices so that we have much less carbon dioxide and methane emitted from agriculture and so that we actually change our practices so that agriculture can be used to store carbon dioxide under the ground. And we know how to do that already. If the world soon embraces organic vegan farming and the organic vegan diet, we can quickly bring Earth back into balance because the source of most global greenhouse gas emissions, animal products, will no longer be consumed. Let's all make this vital planet-saving choice today. Our sincere thanks go to Professor David Caroli for sharing his knowledge and insights on climate change. May his research continue to raise public awareness of this issue, the most critical challenge facing our planet today. For more information on Professor David Caroli, please visit www.earthsci.unimelb.edu.au. 
Wise viewers, we thank you for your kind company on today's program. Up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May we all be filled with the love and light of heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash PE.